Hey everyone, this week we're talking about social judgment theory. This is one of the theories that's based in the field of psychology and basically it explains when persuasive messages are most likely to succeed and how people make judgments about them. So it assumes that people bring prior attitudes to an issue and that those attitudes distort the way they perceive persuasive messages. So let's take a look at the way this works. Basically, there, on any topic or issue, there are a range of opinions that a person can hold. And you want to think about these as following along a continuum of possible positions. So somebody uh, might have, a statement may fall within someone's latitude of acceptance. So these are statements and ideas with which the listener agrees. A statement may fall within their latitude of rejection, so statements and ideas the listener disagrees with or finds objectionable. And then there's also the latitude of non-commitment, so these are statements and ideas with which the listener neither agrees nor disagrees. And among those three, oh for goodness sake, among those three there's an anchor position. So the anchor position says that there is this continuum of possible positions and we usually have a most preferred position. So if you think about the very controversial issue of abortion and we look at these statements here let me move this so these are all possible anchor statements about this issue. So for some people the statement abortion is murder so it should not be legal would absolutely fall into their latitude of acceptance. For others that very same anchor statement would fall in their latitude of rejection. It's hard to imagine that some people would be uh, not committed on the issue of abortion but again the very same statement might fall into somebody's latitude of non-commitment. So all of these potential statements, abortion should be legal during the first trimester, a woman and her doctor should be the sole decision makers about the timing of an abortion, some people agree with that, uh, those statements, some people disagree with those statements, I suppose some people may just not have an opinion on those statements, and so different people will feel differently about the same statement. So one of the primary things that influences people's latitudes of acceptance and rejection is their ego involvement. So how connected they feel with an issue. So if somebody has a high degree of personal relevance for a particular issue, then they are likely to have a high degree of ego involvement. If uh, you are a student athlete at a Big Ten university. You are likely to have a high degree of ego involvement on the issue of unionizing or paying athletes, student athletes, because it would be a high personal relevance for you. For people who've never played sports or don't play college sports, don't care about sports, they don't have a high degree of personal relevance, they probably have very little ego involvement in that issue. And the issue with the issue with ego involvement is that it impacts how much a listener will be open to change and how likely they are to accept the opinion of others. So if you are if your ego is involved, it's going to be much more difficult to persuade you to a different uh, opinion. So let's take a look at how this works on a particular topic and we're going to imagine that we know what these two particular individuals believe about the issue of capital punishment or the death penalty. So Sheriff Joe Arpaio is uh, the sheriff of Maricopa County in Arizona. He's quite vocal about his beliefs on uh, all law enforcement issues, but in part on the death penalty. Sister Helen Pregeen has been an activist against the death penalty in the United States for many years, has written books about it. One of her books was made into a very famous movie. So here now we see 
a possible continuum of anchor statements from very, very lax, ridiculously lax, to very, very severe. So the continuum possibilities, these are anchor statement possibilities, range from murderer should be rewarded, murderer should be slapped on the wrist, murderer should be fined $500, murderer should be sentenced to five years in prison, murderer should be sentenced to 20 years in prison, murderer should be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole, murderer should be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, murderer should be sentenced to death, or murderer should be t sentenced to death by torture. So you can see that in my imagining of what Sheriff Arpaio and Sister Pregine's positions are, that these first five positions would fall into Sheriff Arpaio's latitude of rejection. So he is very strong on law and order. Um, I hope nobody would think murderers should be rewarded or slapped on the wrist. But uh, even for him, 20 years of, of prison isn't enough for murder. Life with the possibility of parole, eh, he doesn't have a strong feeling on that. Um, his two anchor statements that he feels most connected with would be life without the possibility of parole or death. Um, and But even Sheriff Arpaio, I'm hoping, this is my imagining, it would not be in favor of death by torture for a prisoner. And Sister Prejean's latitudes of rejection overlaps uh, a little bit with Sheriff Arpaio. So she would reject those first three possibilities as appropriate sentences for murder. She has a bigger, a wider latitude of non-commitment. So if someone were sentenced to five years or 20 years of prison, she doesn't feel strongly about that. She has one very strong anchor statement. So her preferred position on this issue is that people would be sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. Okay. She, in my imagining, uh, uh, is okay with the possibility of life without the possibility of parole. So that falls into her latitude of non-commitment. And then uh, for her latitude of rejection on the on the extreme end, she's absolutely against the death penalty in, in any situation, and, and clearly she would be against death by torture. So I hope that helps illustrate how social judgment theory works. If you have any questions, let me know. Hey folks, we're going to briefly talk about the elaboration likelihood model, which is another one of the persuasion theories that's based in the field of psychology. So there are two primary routes to persuasion, is what the elaboration likelihood model suggests, the central route and the peripheral route. So the central route is all about thinking and reflecting about the content, evidence, and reasoning of a message. So think about uh, something like a courtroom situation. With the peripheral route, so you're processing the persuasive message per peripherally rather than centrally, you're focusing on cues that aren't directly related to the substance of the message, like a catchy jingle or the attractiveness of the source. All the advertising for iPods is a great example of persuasive messages that are put together with peripheral root processing in mind. There are no statistics about how many songs the iPod will hold, nothing like that. It's, it's designed to get you to, to feel a feeling and not necessarily um, think about whether or not you should buy this product centrally. So the differences are that with the central root of processing, it takes effort. You're thinking, you're reflecting on something, it's time consuming, it, it, it hurts your brain sometimes. 
um, people who end up being persuaded about something through the central processing route tend to resist counter messages. So uh, in a courtroom situation, if the prosecutor has done a good job of um, speaking to the jury using the central route of processing, it may be very difficult for a defense attorney to counter that. When people have been persuaded via the central route, that persuasion tends to stick, so the effects tend to be long-lasting. And the reality is it is just not possible for us to process centrally all the time, even if we wanted to. So that's just a fact of uh, our communication life. So in contrast, the peripheral route uh, is pretty much mindless. We process, when we're processing peripherally, we're using things, cognitive shorthands like, do we like the person? Is the message easy to understand? Um, is it attractive? That sort of thing. So it, it takes less thinking and uh, we probably, we may not notice that we're being persuaded with the peripheral route of processing. And then finally, which, which way do we choose in what situations? Well, ELM would suggest that if you're highly motivated and highly involved in the issue, then you're going to process centrally. If you have a high ability, um, knowledge, and expertise in something, you're likely to process centrally. The peripheral route is used when we have a low motivation or little involvement with the issue, um, or if we just don't have the ability, knowledge, or expertise to process something. So that is our very short lecture on the elaboration likelihood model. Let me know if you have any questions.